Whoa there. Eccentricity tells us how spread out, how stretched an ellipse is going to be. All right, so here we go. For any ellipse, the eccentricity is going to, eccentricity E is equal to the ratio of C to A. Now let's look at how this affects some different ellipses. Um, the eccentricity is always going to be between one and zero, some, some number in between. The closer it is to one, the more stretched out it has become. The closer it is to zero, well, literally the eccentricity being zero would be a circle. So the closer it is to zero, the closer it is to looking like a circle. The less stretched out the major axis ends up becoming. So we can should be able to find the eccentricity of an ellipse uh, pretty simply because we know the eccentricity C over A. That's, that's all we have to do. So we can find C. We know that C is equal to the square root of A squared minus B squared. Yeah. And if we know A squared is 100 and we know B squared is 9, then we know C is equal to the square root of 91. And so the eccentricity would have to be the square root of 91 over 10. And if I just type that in my calculator, I get about 0 0.95 as our eccentricity. Yeah, that wasn't that crazy. <laughs> Moving on, we can use the eccentricity to actually help us um, with some, some relatively uh, helpful things. Here, we have, we have an eyeball. It says the shape of an eye can be modeled by um, a three-dimensional ellipse, the eccentricity of the center um, cross-section for an eye with normal vision is about 0.28. If a normal eye is about 25 millimeters deep, what is the approximate height of the eye? Okay, well, 25 millimeters deep, think about, think about this right here. We're told this is 2B. It really should be. So halfway across our eyeball would have to be A. The A value, if all the way across is 25, because remember the A is the distance away from the center in both directions. There's the center, so it would be A over here, A over here. So A would be 12 and a half millimeters. Well, if the eccentricity is C over A, and we know what, the eccentricity is 0.28. Uh, the C value, do we have the C value on our thing there? We don't, sorry, we're looking for the C value. We know the A value is 12 and a half. <laughs> Sorry, I got lost there in my own thoughts. 12 and a half times 0.28 gives a C value, which happens to be about 3.5. So I can change it, plug that in there. We, we can do a little multiply by 12 and a half. C comes out to be 3.5. All right, so we have C, we have A, we can find B. We know that C is equal to the square root of A squared minus B squared. C is 3.5. A squared, 12.5 squared gives us 156.25. We're going to be subtracting away B squared. We square both sides. 3.5 squared gives us 12.25. 156.25 minus b squared. This is a 
negative 144 equals a negative b squared. So that's 144 does equal b squared. b must be 12. When we plug it in over here, that must be 24 millimeters. Okay, so this wasn't too crazy. It was really just plugging in the formulas, finding our missing piece, and continuing to find more things until we have what we're looking for.